Thank you. Um, uh, Annie, can you unpause the recording? Oh, sorry about that. Okay. Um, recording in progress. Okay, good evening. Welcome to the May 12th Northampton School Committee uh, Student Advisory Council meeting. I'm Mayor Jean Louis Shara, and I'll be presiding. And this meeting is being held remotely on Zoom pursuant to the modifications of the state's open meeting law for the COVID 19 pandemic. And this meeting and all participating on Zoom will be audio and video recorded. I'll begin by asking the clerk to please call the roll of the school committee. Mayor Shara. Present. Member Robbins. Present. From the UK tonight. Mm -hmm. Member Gazy. I'm here. Member Seraphy Cox. <clears throat> Present. Hi. Member Stein. I have not seen Member Stein. Yeah. I don't think he's here yet. Member Levy. Member Levy. Uh, Member Miller. Yes, here. Member Goldman. Present. Member Agna. Present. And Member Davis. Present. Your Honor, you have a quorum. Great, thank you. Um, so we have a student union presentation on standards-based grading. So I will be happy to <clears throat> hand the floor over to the student union. Thanks for being here. Thank you so much. Yeah, so um, today we're gonna be presenting slash discussing standard-based grading and like kind of its implementation at the high school specifically. Um, we don't have a slideshow tonight, so we'll kind of just be talking. Hopefully that's okay. I know it's sometimes helpful to have like a visual like thing to look at, but sorry about that. Um, but yeah, I think Jake's just going to start by talking about the history and kind of briefly explaining standard-based grading. Uh, yeah, so standards-based grading uh, at the high school kind of started last year, though it's happened. It's happened in years prior to individual teachers. But really, when standards-based grading got really introduced to all students in a really big way was the start of this year um, with the introduction of the new uh, grading platform, Otis, um, which made it easier for teachers to uh, show standards-based grading, which was <laughs> the uh, previous Aspen um, tool that we were using. So really, the start of standards-based grading as like the main instrument that students were uh, being familiar with was, I guess, September of 2021. Um, and that implementation was rocky. Uh, a lot of students didn't really know what to, ex a lot of students and teachers didn't really know what to expect. Like maybe they un uh, understood it at like a fundamental level, like what it's supposed to be, how, what is it supposed to look like on, uh, in theory? But when it actually came down to implementation, there was a lot of confusion uh, from teachers to students, um, some teachers to administration um, that really, it's gotten better, definitely gotten better over the past few months. Um, over the few months we've talked with administration, I've, I've gotten uh, information out to students and uh, parents that um, and teachers, just how exactly it's supposed to work, worked out a lot of kinks that were, you know, just not, they weren't how it was supposed to work. Like some students were confused on what a four versus a three would look like on a transcript, four being exemplary, three being um, proficient. And it's, it's taken a lot of time to get students comfortable with the idea. There was a, initially a lot of opposition uh, I can say a lot of the opposition can come from upperclassmen, uh, seniors in particular, who are very confused on how colleges would react. And so I guess that's really where all of this is coming from. The fact that students just were confused and frustrated with the system. And so we've, as a student union, have been trying to meet with administration to clarify and try to fix things so that it standards-based grading is just works better for the next year. And so that's what uh, Lila and Dahlia will be talking about, what we've been doing and some future steps. Yeah, so our meetings with um, the administration 
what's mostly come out of it is we've gotten some answers to common like questions that students have about standard-based grading. Um, and we've also been able to give them feedback from the student body. Um, but they are also currently, I think, collecting feedback from faculty. Um, and hopefully that will be like kind of put together soon so that like the student union can see what teachers think about that and kind of we can all move forward together and kind of make the system work better for students and teachers and administration and everybody involved. Um, but yeah, so there are just a few um, kind of like common questions and concerns that I'm gonna go over that we've heard a lot. Um, and then we might say kind of like some of the answers that the administration gave us when we asked these questions. So one of the most common ones that Jake kind of was talking about was how can I like stand out to colleges with standard-based grade grading and um, like how will colleges like receive like the information that we have a different grading system. Um, so yeah, so pretty much with standard-based grading, many more students, I believe, I don't have the exact numbers, but my impression from our meetings has been that, and from my classes has been that many more students are getting threes and fours, which if you convert that to the old scale of like letter grades and number grades, that's like 95 and hundreds pretty much. Um, though we've, we're, we have been told that like the system is moving away from letter and number grades. So that might not be relevant, but a lot of people are still thinking in terms of A's and B's and C's and like 190 and 80. And it's very hard to make the trans transition away from thinking about grades in that way. So we kind of have a conversion table, which we can maybe show you if that would be helpful. Um, but yeah, so, but I believe many more students are getting threes and fours, which are proficients and exemplaries. Um, and if you convert that back to the old scale, that would be an A. Um, and some students are concerned that this will make it so that they can't stand out um, like to colleges because I guess grade inflation. Um, so pretty much the answer we got about that was that it may make students like, I guess, rely more on letters of recommendation and extracurriculars um, and stuff like that, though that was the response, I believe, of just one school that the administration has talked to. The administration has been talking to a few local colleges about like how they would react to seeing SBG on a transcript. Um, so that's not like a definitive answer, um, but it is, yeah. So pretty much this question is a little bit unanswered still um, about like, will, I seem like I'm working the same amount of, as somebody who may be working less hard than me, um, but like we're still getting the same grade because now more people are getting the same high grades. Yeah, so that's that's a pretty tricky one. And that's kind of goes hand in hand with the fact that a three, with which is a proficient, if you convert that back to like the old scale again, that would be anywhere from a 75 to a 95. So when teachers are grading things, they have to choose proficient, exemplary, developing or beginning or missing. Um, and so they, but a lot of, or some teachers that I've heard have said that a three being like a 75 to a 95 on the old scale is too broad of a range. So people that would be getting C's in the old system are now getting like A's in the old system. Yes, it's very complicated, um, but yeah, so that is that is a complaint that we've heard a bit from both students and teachers. Um, yeah, and then another thing is that with standard-based grading, um, and this doesn't necessarily have to do with like the proficiency scale, but students can now reassess within a two-week period if they didn't get like an ideal grade the first time they assessed a standard. Um, and, but at least in my classes, that two week period is just kind of unlimited reassessments. So um, some people have said that this is 
like less motivating um and you can kind of procrastinate until like whenever when like I guess when grades are due or when the two-week period is ended it makes them pay less attention in class this is my personal experience it makes me pay less attention in class because I know that if I screw up the first time I'll just do it again the second or third time and I can get the same grid um and another concern people have with this is if it's preparing people for college um, where you generally can't reassess on like finals or any assessment. Um, but on the other hand, standardized grading only grades assessments similar to college where you're not necessarily being graded on like reading your book every night, but you're being graded on like a final paper. So yeah, those are kind of pros and cons, but there is kind of, in my perspective, an equity issue with this because students that are able to take Smith College courses or HCC or GCC or Westfield State will get that college experience, but students that may not be able to do that are just at NHS with standard-based grading, which is maybe not preparing students for the rigor of a college environment. Um, so that is another issue that we've brought up to the administration um, and are currently working on. Um, yeah, and then I guess the last thing is that with standard-based grading, something called HOWLs has been kind of put into place, Habits of Work and Learning, I believe. Um, and HOWLs are kind of like participation grades, like are you being a friendly student? Like, are you doing your work when you're asked? But the thing about these is that they're not part of the final grade. Like maybe in the past you would get a participation grade for like a discussion or something like that. Um, and apparently you're not supposed to be able to reassess if you don't have like good howls, but I have not seen that being implemented. So I think that's another thing that like, if we work on the implementation, it's a really good idea because then students have to participate in order to be able to reassess. Um, and that might like, fix the kind of procrastinating issue. Um, but yeah, so generally the feedback that I've heard and from what I've experienced is standard-based grading has caused students to kind of pay less attention and work less hard in the moment and which often leads to procrastinating um, and being behind. Yeah, so I guess Dolly's gonna talk a little bit more about like our conclusions about this and what we're gonna do move, be doing moving forward. Okay, thanks, Ella. Um, <clears throat> so I'm gonna talk about some specific conclusions and specific ideas we have, and then just generally um, the main things we've noticed about how this has changed the school, which Lila touched a little bit on. So um, first of all, one important thing is that the grading guidelines um, are set by each department. So within the entire school, um, each teacher grades a little bit differently, but it's supposed to be um, pretty consistent and standardized by department. Um, we've noticed and other students have noticed that within department, there are still some inconsistencies. Um, and those inconsistencies are in like, what quality of work determines what grade um, along with like, whether there are barriers to reassessing, like having howls or um, demonstrating a bit more understanding before you take another shot at reassessing. Um, just those are some of the inconsistencies. And the idea that we had and we've been talking about with um, the school administrators is having departments kind of like either release their guidelines um, to students or publicly explain or like host a forum for students um, to explain how the work is going to be graded in the department um, and just kind of provide this forum for student questions and conversations around standard-based grading on a smaller scale. So there have been standard-based grading flex blocks hosted by um, school administrators from the entire school, um, but I think it'd probably be more personable and more helpful for students and also probably more students would go if they were held by departments. Okay. Next, um, generally, pretty much anyone you will talk to in the school will be like, yeah, standard-based grading, the concept of it is good, it seems equitable, I think it's a really good idea. But um, when actually implemented, 
as Lila touched on, it does lead to really good grades, but also probably grade inflation. And those two things, grade inflation or good grades, um, is kind of more emphasized than the level of understanding um, that should be higher with standard-based grading. And we've heard from just like some research that the school has provided that standard-based grading is actually supposed to limit grade inflation. Um, but I think the opposite perhaps is happening, which means that like grade inflation is still a very real problem and that standard-based grading hasn't fixed it. Maybe it's at the same level um, or maybe it's exacerbated. There's really no way of telling. Overall, in terms of the school culture, um, Lila talked about this a bit. There's definitely a really big shift towards placing more emphasis on the tests and the reassessments, the, um, the summative assignments, as they're called. Um, and we've moved away from active learning and there's a big drop in engagement on like a daily basis because probably there is no busy work, um, which you know might be a good thing or a bad thing, but definitely students are less engaged um, and less they see less um, need to focus in the moment because you can reassess it again and it's easy to reassess it. So in terms of what we're doing next, um, this is not a done issue. You're probably gonna be hearing about this more. Um, the administration is continually assessing how standard-based grading is working, talking with students, faculty, um, and then we're working with them on it. So we're gonna keep um, talking with them, talking with students um, and brainstorming ideas about how to kind of like bridge the gap between how standard-based grading should be working, how we all think that it could, um, and where we are now, which is not ideal. Um, also, if I could just add, we I do want to like acknowledge that the point of standard-based grading is to de-emphasize like numerical grades and emphasize proficiency. Um, and I, I think that's a great idea and it doesn't really make sense for people to be graded on like a number. It makes sense to like measure their understanding so that students don't have to do busy work if they already understand something and students that don't understand something can do more practice. Um, but I think kind of what Dolly was saying is that it's not kind of working out that way at the moment. And so we wanna work towards making like proficiency a reality and less of like this kind of idea that we're holding on to and also holding on to like numerical grades it's just, it's a very hard transition, I think, for people to understand that it's no longer about A, B, C, and Ds and stuff like that. It's about what's your understanding, both like students and teachers. Yeah. Also, so, I forgot a really important part, just like skipped right over it. Um, one like really specific thing that we've heard from teachers and students, but mostly teachers when they're looking over the work um, and trying to give it a grade is that you know we have those options one two three four and they're feeling that like it's too little like the gaps between all the numbers are a little bit too big um, and then they're having to choose like a two or a three for work that might be in the middle and so we brought that up with school administrators and they really heard that um, and are taking that into consideration thinking about maybe adding like half steps like 2.5 3.5 or um, expanding the scales it's like above four. That's just something that probably is gonna be changing. Okay. Thank you, Dahlia, Lila, and Jake. Um, any questions or comments from the school committee? Holly, I'm sorry, Member Gazy. Um, I'd like to know how many other uh, local school districts use, use um, standard-based grading, uh, and um, Dr. Provost, maybe you can help me out here. What, what, was, um, what, was the con what was the driving factors? I mean, and because I wanna know how colleges are reacting and which colleges you've contacted about um, their reaction to standards-based grading. So I, I can't, 
uh, answer the question about how many other uh, local schools are using standards-based grading. I can talk to the driving force behind it though, um, which goes back to the last district improvement plan in which the goal was to explore standards-based grading across the district. The district formed a team that involved uh, educators from all levels um, and all different um, subject areas within the district and worked on understanding standards-based grading and different uh, options for implementing standards-based grading because there's certainly many different ways to do it. Over the course of, let's say the last three years of that district improvement plan. Um, and the rationale for that what was exactly what the students had described that there were issues with grade inflation with the numerical system. There were issues uh, around equity. There were um, concerns about grading a student on a one, um, you know, sort of a, a one chance shot without any opportunity for, um, for them to improve themselves. And more than that, I, I would say sort of the overall uh, concern was what Lila was talking about in embedding work habits as a part of the grade, because that had a lot of um, concerns around equity. We know students don't have similar levels of support to do some of those things that sometimes get um, embedded in a, a work habits grade. And so really just focusing on whether the student has the competency or not, not whether the student has all the rest of these trappings that go with you know the idea of a good student. Um, while we were in the context of that, we did reach out to local colleges and schools to talk about how uh, standards-based grading um, transcript would look. The feedback we got at the time was that it would not be a detriment to students. As you know, um, a lot of colleges at the time were moving away from forms of standards-based, um, I'm sorry, not standards-based, but forms of um, standardized assessments like SATs and other um, ways of, of judging student performance because really what they were looking for were um, not students who could do well on a test, um, which they found predicted really how well they did for the first semester, but not whether they were gonna be successful in college per se, but how well-rounded they were, um, which I think gets to the uh, comment that one of the students talked about that admissions offices would be looking more at things like, is it a well-rounded student? Does the student have extracurricular activities? How do they participate with their community? And um, other factors that are becoming more important in college admissions now. And then, just to finish the story, then when this, dis this current district improvement plan was written, the, the team working on it had to face a decision about whether or not to make standards-based grading part of the plan. You know, we had spent time studying it, but now did we actually want to implement it? So we debated that for about a year um, and then ended up in the final version of the current district improvement plan saying, yes, we need to move forward and, and give it a try and see how it works. Mm -hmm. um, so that's that's why that's how we got to the place where we are right now for implementation. Yeah, I, um, I think that, um, I mean, the elementary schools have been using that type of grading even back when I was doing it. Um, but there do seem to be a lot of um, tricky aspects making that change at the high school level, especially. And um, I want to thank the students for bringing all these concerns. And I'm glad to hear that you are working with administration to try to figure out how to, this all works together. Lila, is there something you wanted to share? Yeah, thank you. I was just. Um, wanted to add on to one of the things Dr. Provost said, um, which is that one of my concerns actually about standard-based grading is that colleges would be focusing more on extracurriculars specifically um, because many students aren't able to um, do like extracurricular activities um, and maybe have to like go to work or take care of their younger siblings. And so I kind of see that as an equity issue. Um, and that's also something that's an issue just with the college admissions process and not necessarily our fault as it like our grading systems fault. But I am concerned that if colleges are focusing 
less on grades, which is something that every student has. Um, they'll be focusing on like things that only certain students have access to, I guess. Thank you. Um, uh, Member Davis. Uh, thank you. Um, I guess I wanted to um, uh, put out that I see, um, I, I really thank you for, for uh, the clear way that you broke up what the issues are and that you spoke about it and that you're, you have ideas about how to solve the problem. I do see that at the high school level, it's more complex perhaps than um, at the elementary school that I have from um, experience with. Um, I think something that really jumped out with me that um, my understanding of standards-based grading is problematic is this idea of a conversion scale. Mm -hmm. It's like, because it's so hard, even after years of using standards-based grading myself, people are used to the ABC. People are used to the 90 to 100 thing. Mm -hmm. And my understanding of it is that it really is two different things. It's a different way of looking at what was learned. And, um, and that I see that as confusing to the teachers, to the students, to very understandably make a valiant attempt at to understand it by saying, well, this is sort of like an A, this will be sort of like a B, because it's really, just a minute, did you learn that chunk of stuff? Do you understand it? Um, so, um, uh, I would like to think that colleges are familiar with this, like Northampton isn't the only school in the United States that's doing it, but it, I definitely would be reassured if I were a student applying to colleges that that it's understood what, what you've gone through and how you've demonstrated what you know. But thank you very much um, for presenting this to us. Member Agna. Hi, I'd like to echo my colleagues in saying that I really appreciate this presentation. And I'm also not as familiar, I think, with all of the aspects of standards-based grading as I should be. Um, but I, I did serve on that team just before I retired. And we did a lot of work in the elementary schools for this. The challenges at the high school clearly are, are different. I have one just sort of question or comment that what you said, Lila, about the fact that sometimes there's a grade or a number given to a student that might be the same as to another student and the level of work might not be the same. So that's confusing, I can imagine, to you and to others doing the work. My question or wondering is, it allowing teachers to give a grade or a number to a student, determining that's the, the level that they know that student can achieve that might be different from the other student who might have to get to the four by doing more work. And so it allows the, the teacher to measure individually what they see as the, the ability for those students to achieve to that level. Does that make sense of what I'm talking about, Lila? <laughs> I think so. Are you asking, like, is the idea that teachers kind of differentiate their grading that's what I'm asking, yes. Okay, my impression is that that's not what is going on and that's not what the administration, I could be wrong about this, but I don't okay. think that's what the administration is um, trying to get teachers to do. Okay. I think, yeah, does that answer your question? It does, and I, I will probably try to think more about it. I know we have a little bit of a time challenge right here too, so. But thank you so much, everybody. Thank you, Member Robbins. Thank you, and thank you, uh, Jake and Lila and Dahlia. I'm gonna ask a question about the Powell's part of it. So my understanding is that 
homework is no longer included as part of student assessment. Is that right? Yes. Okay, so um, given that, and given what I really heard, which is concerning for me, is your observation from students that there's a lack of engagement in the classroom. And for us, um, that's a huge part of our mission is to have engaged students in the classroom. And I'm really um, wondering how the habits of work and learning either contribute or um, distract from that and how teachers deal with that. And it sounds like that's a whole nother conversation, which I'm hoping we can have in the curriculum subcommittee because it's, um, I think it's one the community has a lot of questions about as well. But um, my own thoughts about it are, if we are holding kids to a level of being able to show what they know by a summative assessment, and that's what the focus is, how are we teaching students to get to that point? And that may very well um, be something that we simply don't know enough about uh, what's happening in individual classrooms or across the school, but it does sound like it's a really worthy conversation, which I hope we can have very soon. And I really appreciate your um, being able to talk to both administration and students about this. And I hope we can um, continue on having that collaborative discussion in the future about it. Thank you, Member Robbins. Member Serafie Cox. Yeah, thank you. Um, obviously this conversation is primarily about the high school and we've, uh, some of my colleagues have brought up um, the implementation of uh, this grading system at the elementary school, um, which as an elementary school parent, I have experienced. Um, so I'm, I'm curious um, if maybe Dr. Provost can, uh, or, um, and I guess mostly just Dr. Provost could speak to how the implementation is going at the middle school. We are behind at the middle school. Um, the elementary school, as Member Agnes said, had its standards-based grading going back for a long, long time, probably more than a decade. Um, it, for them, it was just a process of changing the, um, really changing the descriptors because the descriptors had gotten to be quite out of date. Uh, the high school uh, went forward with implementation before the middle school um, because I think a lot of that had to do with the change in administration. Um, so at the time when this was all starting, it was also Principal Caldwell's first year Mm -hmm. and getting to know staff. And then of course there was COVID. So middle school is in a preparation mode, but hasn't actually started to implement standards based at this time. Okay. And so I, I think that this conversation, um, I guess I would, I would that this conversation could be um, useful for the, the middle school to you know, have learnings uh, from implementation at the high school. Agreed. Thank you. Okay, any other questions or comments? Seeing none, I'm gonna thank you again for joining us. Um, and, oh, um, sorry, we're not, uh, it's, we're, this is just questions from the school committee. We haven't gotten to public comment yet. Um, so if there are no further questions, is there a motion to adjourn out of this part of the meeting? Um, and the Student Advisory Council part of the meeting, and then we will enter the full school committee meeting. Motion to adjourn the Student Advisory Council meeting. Thank you. I second it. Motion's been made and seconded. Uh, roll call, please, Annie. Member Robbins. Yes. <laughs> Member Gazy. Yes. Member Serafie Cox. Yes. Member Stein. Yes. Member Levy. Has she joined us? She... Hi. There you are. Yes. Sorry for my tardiness. Member Miller. Yes. Member Goldman. Yes. Member Agna. Yes. Member Davis. Yes. And Mayor Shara. Yes. Okay, thank you. We have adjourned out of um, the Student Advisory Council meeting and